Hello and welcome to Tank and Affy News. We, today we are doing a book review. We have from the Landcraft series M113 American Armored Personnel Carrier by Ben Skipper. Of course the M113 is probably one of the most well-known vehicles, um, armored vehicles in post-war history as thousands and thousands were made and it's been in service since the 1960s. And this Landcraft series is similar to the Tankcraft series that I've reviewed before. Um, these are, as you can see, they're soft cover books, fairly large format. This one retails for $24.95 in the United States. I'm sure you can probably find it for a little less through some of the online vendors. Um, $16.99 in the UK. The page count is 64 pages, uh, color and black and white. Um, so that gives you sort of the, the basic physical description of the book. Um, and these are geared more toward modelers it, I should say, geared as much toward modelers as they are people interested in history. So, the books, the, the, these books tend to be have history in the first part, and then they get into a discussion about particular modeling kits and pictures of models that people have put together. Um, some very impressive ones. So, these are really good resources for somebody who. So, if you're planning, you know, if you wanted to build an M113 kit, this would be a good place to start to get a little bit of historical background on the vehicle to really understand it. And then to see, you know, so what some of the kits that are out there that are available and what other people have done with it. Because you could probably spend uh, your entire career as a model builder and only do M113s. Because there's been so many different variations of this vehicle um, in so many different armies. So let us get into the book. Um, so they start just right on the inside of the front cover, which I kind of like. Like, there's no wasted space in these books. Um, and like I said, so the beginning part here goes through the history, so design and development. Um, nice shiny glossy paper, so the illustrations look good. You know, it's got co since this is a post-war vehicle, most of the photos are in color, which is nice. It's not like the World War II stuff where you're looking at black and white mostly. Um, so it discusses the development. Um, the the one thing that jumped out at me that set off some alarms that I I, I wasn't super happy with is including James Gavin and and crediting him for he had nothing to do with the development of the vehicle. Um, specifically, he he was an airborne commander during World War II. He advocated after the war for more air mobile forces, as did a lot of other people. Uh, the thing is, though, there's been certain people who have really picked up on and elevated his his place within the development of the M113, and going so far as to try to get the vehicle named after him retroactively. As far as I know, it's really just one dude called Mike Sparks, who's known as Sparky on some of the forums online and most people uh don't take that whole effort terribly seriously um you know again it's it's a it's, a, it's, it's an armored troop carrier it's not um gavin was an airborne commander anyhow uh the, the, so enough about that uh but if you do ever check out like there's that that black tail defense uh, video series which i i find really problematic is another person to really promotes the like the wonders of the M113 and Gavin and that stuff. Um, that said, the rest of it, reading uh, the history seems pretty well to jive with everything else I know about this vehicle, you know, because I've, I've read Honeycutt's uh, book on armored personnel uh, development, the Bradley book, um, and so I think this the, everything is, is pretty well researched and reasonably accurate. Uh, it obviously can't really, and the author of course states this, he admits that in a book this size, you can't cover every single variant, particularly internationally, of this this vehicle. I mean, it'd just be insane. Uh, you 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 like I said, you could write twenty books this size, probably documenting if you're trying to go into any sort of detail, uh, because it is, like I said, the most widely produced personnel carrier of the post-war world, maybe Western world for sure, um, used by many different countries, still in service to this day. So. And surprisingly, there haven't been a whole lot of books published on it. I mean, there's been small ones, but there's not, like... As far as I know, I don't think there's any, like, really substantial hardcover histories other than the Honeycutt Bradley book. Um, all right, so we'll keep flipping through here so I think people can get the idea. So here we're into the, the international um, section, going through some of the different variants of around the world, major things. And then here we have the section on one... I, always, I usually say M113, you know, I've heard some people say M113, but I, I feel like M113 is sort of, or what I call it at least. Um, 
So this is more of a technical detail. Here's some modeling essentials, sort of nice stuff. This section here, in service and in action, so gives you some photo descriptions and photographic uh, images of different variants in service at different points in time. And more variants. Here we see one of the more interesting variants is some of these are used to make the um, the, the Op 4 uh, vehicles that the U.S. Army uses in training exercises. So uh, they would build them to look like usually like Russian vehicles, uh, replacing some of the older ones that were based on old Sheridan chassis. Which those would be fun if somebody uh, did some really nice 135 or 132 scale models of those. And going ahead here, so just I mean everything from. You know, I mean, this was the basis also of, of not just an APC, but got used for, the, you know, being the basis of cargo carriers, missile launchers, you know, command vehicles, ambulances, anything you can think of. Um, even some of them being given out to, in the United States, to police forces uh, after 9-11, when the Army sort of had that rather controversial program where they were sort of dumping old Defense Department materials to uh, local police forces, whether... Didn't always make sense from a practicality standpoint, but uh, there are police departments out there with M113s. Uh, I'm not sh really sure why, frankly. Anyway, so here's some nice prints, um, or nice uh, illustrations, paintings. It gives you an example of different paint and marking schemes. And so obviously that's going to be useful for model builders. And then we get in the section where people actually show the models that they've built. So here is in the MRV, the Australian version, so they've, they've basically put a, a, a British designed, looks like the turret from the Scorpion on top. So, and there's a few, several different variants of the vehicle like that, where they try to turn them into sort of lightweight fire support vehicles. Uh, here we get another kit of, so the U.S. Cavalry, Vietnam era. Here we have another fire support vehicle, obviously a different turret, but again, that same idea. I think that one they're using the turret off the, the Saladin for the basis of that vehicle. And then we get into discussion of, of specific kits, which is nice because, you know, especially if you, if you go in the model, local model shop sometimes, there's quite a few different kits and you don't really know which is the best one or which one's going to have, uh, be the build you're going to want to base your project on so the description of actual kits is nice and you know these kits stick around for a long time so it's not like this is going to become outdated real fast um, and in some cases you know these companies just keep using the same molds and over and over so uh, it's pretty well known which kits are which and, and what their various um, uh, pluses and minuses are in terms of, of quality and accuracy so that pretty much finishes off the book. You know, on the back here we have pictures of some of their other series. Of course, there's the tank craft ones, which we reviewed some of those, and the land craft, which do the non-tank vehicles. Um, and so that's it. Um, so yeah, I think this one's. Uh, I give it a thumbs up. Uh, I, I like this series. You know, at first I sort of, because I'm not a, a model builder as much, I was sort of like, well, I'm not sure it's as relevant, but I do enjoy seeing what other people build and I think the the history parts in the front of the book make them worthwhile um, uh, particularly like I said a vehicle even as, as famous a vehicle as the M113 or M113 there hasn't been uh, it's, it's nice to have a book that's got a concise history in it because you know having to read through Honeycutt uh, is, is sort of a chore and I'm not sure I even have you know I'm pretty sure they did an Osprey one of the new Vanguard titles on, on the M113, but I'm not sure that I have it. Um, so, yeah, uh, I enjoy this series. I would recommend it, particularly, like I said, if you're planning on building a, a model kit of the M113, this is going to be a very useful resource. So thank you to Casemate for sending me this copy to look at, and we'll catch you on the next one.